Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As I was growing up, the thought of buying green products was beginning to eventuate. I remember going to the shopping centre with my parents, and for the first time ever, we were looking for organic products and environmentally friendly cleaning products. Remember when Woolies bought in those reusable bags? All of these things were done because of the caring people who believe that spending that little bit extra to buy green products will have a better impact on the environment. This I personally agree with. Though there are a number of arguments against this that will be brought up later on, such as it is considerably more expensive to purchase greener products and that will we as one individual really make that much of a difference by caring about the products we use? and the impact using these items has on society? As individuals, we have a collective responsibility to look after and take care of our beautiful planet in whatever way we can. The introduction of green products and services is becoming a hugely successful and fast-growing industry. In Oz, we have a range of different industries introducing greener alternatives from agriculture, skincare, building, business and transport. I personally believe that we as a nation need to work harder to become greener. The overriding question here, everybody, is are individuals willing to pay more for green products and services? I think they are. When we as individuals think of purchasing green products, generally the overriding reason we consider it is because of status. All human beings want to be seen as being truly altruistic. There is nothing in society that communicates this desire better than by buying green products that often cost significantly more and are of lower quality. However, the overriding benefits for you, for your, your environment, will benefit everybody. In a recently published paper, Going Green to be Seen, Status, Reputation and Conspicuous Conservation show results that people generally forgo their creature comforts and give up luxury to feel important by purchasing a green product. For many people, the catch is that people generally only forgo indulging themselves when others can see them. Many green purchases are rooted in the evolutionary idea of competitive altruism. The notion that people compete for status by trying to appear more altruistic? Research has found that when people shop online, they choose products that are more luxurious and products that enhance comfort. But when in public, people's preferences for green products increase because most people want to be seen as caring altruistics. This theory is nowhere clearer than in the highly visible and easily identifiable Toyota Press. The press functions as a mobile, self-promoting billboard for pro-environmentalists. A reputation for being a caring individual gives you status and prestige. When you publicly display your environmentally friendly nature, you send the signal that you care. The study will also show that status motivates increased desirability of green products, especially when such products cost more, but not less relative to non-green products. For the entrepreneurs out there and companies aiming to capture the green market, the key may be getting the product to be purchased and used by the public. A global survey has shed new light on the social enterprise sector, revealing almost a third of Aussies are willing to pay more for products and services that give back to society. There you go. Now I'll talk about an interesting guy who decided to do his part in becoming the No Impact Man. Colin Bevan, the No Impact Man, got sick of listening to himself complain about the world and not actually doing anything about it. He decided to launch a year-long project in which he, his wife, his young daughter and their dog attempted to live in the middle of New York City with as little environmental impact as possible. Look, this is going to cost a little bit of money, but he's making an effort to change. The project was an experiment with a way of living that might both improve quality of life and be less harmful to the planet. It created public attention on issues such as food systems, sustainability, climate change, water scarcity, 
and minerals and energy resource depletion. Big issues. The site known as Pacman.com has over 2,500 daily visitors, 4,000 daily page views, has over 10,000 emails and newsreader subscriptions, and a staggering 1.8 million people have visited the blog since it was established. Bevan feels that waiting for the Simmons and the CEOs to make to just make changes in the world will take way too long. He used the comparison that polar bears are already drowning because the polar ice is melting. Research shows that they are now so hungry that they are beginning to eat each other. He didn't sit around waiting as this situation is getting terrible. The experiment in other words means no trash, no carbon emissions, no toxins in the water. No elevators, no subways, no products in packaging, no plastics, no air cons, no TVs, and worst of all, no toilets. Next, we'll go into a company, one of America's favourite drinks, and one of mine, beer. Waterworks, it's an alarming statistic, but by the end of year 2030, the, world's, the world will be 40% short of water. Because of this issue, companies in America, such as Miller's Cores, are working to reduce water wastage and protect this precious resource. This is being done by small changes in their everyday operations and through large conservation campaigns. Water shortage is a global issue, but to fix it, local solutions are needed. For a company like Miller's Core, water being the lifeblood of beer, the drink we all love. Water is required in nearly every phase of the beer brewing process. The company has decided to work together to reduce its water usage by 15% by the year 2015. They have been studying each of its local watersheds in order to take appropriate action on a local level and make significant investments in local water stewardship activities. Miller's Corps decided to partner up with the Nature Conservancy to manage a large preserve surrounding the headwaters of one of its major barley providers. The brewing company has provided the Nature Conservancy with financial support to assist them in monitoring extreme flows and water temperatures, which help measure the effect of watershed stewardship efforts. Miller's Corps' contribution to this cause has not gone unnoticed. They have since engaged local business and businesses and are getting them involved with the concerning issue. Now we will touch on APEC tariff walls which are going to come down for the environmental goods. Our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Gillard, has committed Australia to a new trade deal to a new trade deal among Asia Pacific nations, seeking to drive up growth in green industries by cutting tariffs by 5% or less on environmental goods. On the 14th of November 2011, the APEC group met in Hawaii, hosted by Barack Obama, where it was pledged to take concrete steps to achieve green growth. Reducing trade barriers for environmental goods will help the fight against climate change by speeding up transition to a global low economy, a global low carbon economy. Sorry about that. We have now looked at why people are green, are going green. The general motivation of status and touched on individuals and an individual and his desire to make a difference. A business who wants to play their part, and also the world leaders coming together to look at ways our politicians can create a green future for all. Let's now look at why people decide not to purchase green goods and why they are not happy to spend more on such goods. A big reason why people choose not to go green and start purchasing eco products is because they do not see how there is going to be a positive effect in their lives should they make the jump into green pastures. These people just don't see what sort of value buying eco-friendly products will have on them. They generally feel as though there is no way that they are going to be able to see the benefits of buying these products and, would, and why would they waste their energy thinking of how they can make a difference to the environment. Another big reason for people not going green and buying eco products is they feel that someone else out there is doing all the work for them. They feel as though they do not have to put forth such a great effort in going green because there are many others out there working tirelessly to do so. 
People feel that by buying a few green products, they are not doing enough for the cause. So therefore, why bother helping at all? Another big issue as to why people don't go green is the current economic environment. I totally understand this because some products, especially greener goods, are valued higher. And look, a lot of people will go out of their way to purchase these goods. But you know what? Some people won't. One day, I tend to think they will. Worldwide, there is a change in consciousness whereby people now value healthy living, clean water, clean air, and are aiming to minimise resources and energy, sorry, maximise resources and energy efficiency, which is integral to a new career. The overall growth of eco-product uses across the globe is a way forward in reducing the overall impact as us as individuals have on the planet. As you can see, everybody, some individuals out there are willing to pay more for greener goods and are willing to go that extra bit further to make that impact on society. Get involved. All right, thank you very much. Now for a couple of questions which I've drafted. Question one, it is fantastic that people are so enthusiastic about becoming green. However, can we please go further into what exactly it is, what exactly is a green product? Okay, whether it be consumers, products or ads, is that green like the planet itself encompasses everything, air, water, biological life, chemicals, energy. A green product spans from the product's full life cycle starting with the raw materials, sustainably harvest, organic, recycled, right through to disposal, compostable, recyclable, and everything throughout. It's quite interesting, man. Eh? All right, guys, question two. As a marketer, how would you market green products to consumers, especially when it costs a little bit extra? Marketers need to really play on consumers' most basic human characteristic, that of embarrassment. Overall, creating peer pressure, as negative as it may sound, seems to actually work in today's weird world. As a consumer, if you believe that your next-door neighbours is taking steps to go green, this will make you think more about doing it yourself. And soon you will find you're at the shopping mall looking for eco-cleaning products, no matter what the cost. Another beauty is making the consumer feel guilty. Clever marketers can make people feel guilty for not going green. Making an individual feel guilty is one of the best known ways of getting an individual across that line to get payment out of them for that green product. Thank you very much for listening to my speech. I hope you've learned something.